you know, Yorkshire, North Yorkshire Local Enterprise Partnership have, have commissioned a, ph a phenomenal piece of work around um, the circular economy and understanding the bioeconomy in that space. Yeah, it's really quite, there's a lot of foresight that's gone into this. And there's 40 of the 44 hemp producers that are in Yorkshire. So you start to get this really interesting regional makeup across the UK where, you know, it might be a bit like York Stone, mm -hmm. that actually there's a bit of a revival in hempcrete and hemp construction because it's such a predominance of the manufacturing industry there is about bio-based materials and using natural materials like hemp. But there's no reason why we can't have other emerging economic models around circularity and around particularly biocircularity, which I'm really passionate about. You know, we've done an amazing amount of work with a lab in Sydney called the Deep Green Biotech Hub. And there's this, there's a phenomenal technology. It's already proven. It's not scaled to the level that we need it to be scaled at, but that's because of a number of different political and economic levers that need sorting out. But these guys are essentially 200 of the most intelligent marine biologists that you've ever come across. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, why is someone in construction talking to marine biologists? Because these guys are really focused on one thing, which is the development of something called a bioreactor. Mm -hmm. And this bioreactor is a massive, think of a shipping container at the minute. It's called the Green Genie. I love this thing. It's on Jones Street in Sydney. There's no link to me there. <laughs> I often joke with Peter that it was a homage. <laughs> a bioreactor sucks in dirty air. And if you get the right strain of algae, which is what these incredibly intelligent people are working on, mm -hmm. the algae then consumes all of the CO2 in the air. It also, interestingly, starts to eat all of the volatile organic compounds in the air and it reproduces. So you end up with a high value biomass, you know, in this algal growth that you can harvest. Mm -hmm. So you've, you've got super clean air coming out the other end. Typically outdoor external air, if it's clean, is about 400 parts per million CO2. The air that's coming out of this bioreactor is zero parts per million CO2. I've never breathed zero parts per million CO2 air in my life. I don't think anybody has, unless you're on the other end of the Green Genie in Jones Street in Sydney. <laughs> But the, the really exciting thing about this is not only have we come across a technology that will enable us to create cleaner air, to generate a whole new biomass product, it's also a really high value biomass product. We're not going to use it for fertilizer or for anything else. We can, but we're going to use it to create biofuels. It's already been used to create an aviation grade biofuel. Mm -hmm. And often when people say to me, you know, how do you feel about working on an airport? I don't have any problem with working on an airport because I don't think air travel is an unsolvable problem. In fact, it's already been solved. Mm -hmm. You know, these guys have developed a aviation grade biofuel. It's been put into a passenger plane and the passenger plane has flown. The challenge and the problem is trying to break down existing incumbent energy companies and big oil companies to say you should really be paying to scale this amazing aviation biofuel. So for me, there's this unbelievable future that's within our grasp as, as, as the UK. We've got phenomenal science and engineering capabilities in this, in this country to be able to say, well, let's really double down on the bioeconomy. <laughs>